Hi, welcome to City Scene with Mayor Mike Cahill. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. Your Honor, welcome. Hey, Walt. How you doing? Good, good. This is uh, our first show of 2020. It is. Happy New Year. And since it's February, happy Valentine's Day. Well, gee, I didn't think you'd remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what, what I thought we would do today? I, I have a whole list of um, things that, you know, projects and, and things around the city. And maybe we'll kind of look around Beverly, the show, sure. and you can kind of comment on what's happening. But before we do that, there, there have been some changes in city personnel here. And maybe uh, you could bring our, our viewers up to date uh, on that. And, and the first one, your, your chief of staff, Kevin Haratunian, left to become the town administrator. What's his official title up in? Town administrator of the town of Topsfield. Ta uh, yeah. Town administrator. So, so tell us, what's, uh, what's, happening with, what's happened with uh, his position? Sure. Well, first, Kevin, Kevin left right around Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I told him about three years ago, I said, you're going to leave to run your own community eventually. And I'm just glad we had him for six years because yeah. Kevin's a wonderful man, Good an incredibly man. talented person. And he did a lot of great work for us. And, and yes, now he's doing his work in Topsfield. Yeah. Have you um, heard from him? Still living in Beverly. I was out to dinner with him the other night. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he's doing great. Yeah. Doing wonderfully. Does he yeah. regret what he did? No, no regrets. <laughs> he misses us, but no regrets. I think, I think he's, uh, he's got a lot of really interesting and, and important work to do there. And he's, he dove right in, yeah. which would be expected. Well, that, that's typical of him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he's got a, an incredible work ethic. Yeah. And, and we have kind of, you know, re, um, rebooted and we're moving ahead with some really great talent in our office. Um, Stephanie Bellotti, um, a Beverly resident, um, she has been for the last two years working as our constituent services director and handling some project management work. She essentially was promoted into the position of chief of right, staff. Right. Uh, she's doing great work. And Jocelyn Kersker, who's been over at the rec department, rec department for the last yeah. 15 years and has been uh, rec director Bruce Doig's number two over there for a number of years, she's come over to our, our office to handle that constituent services and project management oh, work wonderful. that Stephanie was doing. Um, and we still have Martha Lewis, and nothing gets done without Martha, well, yeah, as my Martha executive good, yeah. secretary. So yeah. we, we've got a great team. Yeah, and I, I've already had a chance to uh, work with Stephanie Bellotti on a, on a couple BevCam-related uh, things. Now, also, um, uh, in terms of the city staff, uh, Wes Slate has, uh, has <coughs> retired. Any, any word on what, how that process of replacing Wes is yeah, going? Yeah, so the, the city council put together a search group of, of a, a few of the councilors, and they are in the process of interviewing, is my understanding. And um, Wes's last day officially comes up soon, um, but he's been, uh, been using some unused vacation time, really. So his last day in the office was last month. Uh, but they're looking to fill the position within the next several weeks. Right. I know that. And Lisa Kent, the assistant clerk, has been serving as, in an interim capacity right, as right. city clerk. And I, I like to make sure our viewers know that the, the city clerk doesn't report to the mayor. The city clerk reports to the city council, correct? Yeah, so, the city clerk and the other uh, employees in that office are all uh, hired by and overseen by the city council. The city that's council. part of our city charter. Right. Is, is how that's uh, right. organized. And we, we've just heard that uh, um, Anna Lang staff, uh, the Beverly... No, you, you may have just heard it, but I heard it a while ago. We're still in mourning. <laughs> Anna, Anna Lang staff is fantastic. Yeah. I, I've been so um, happy to, and privileged to get to work with her. And, you yeah. know, she's worked at the library for decades. Yeah. She's been our library director for the last few years, and she'll be retiring uh, later this spring. And the Library Board of Trustees has put together a search committee, and they also are in process of, of interviewing candidates to become our new library director. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and we both know uh, Anna from uh, our Rotary Club, Beverly, Beverly Rotary Club. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's get on to some of the activities that are going sure. uh, on along town. So I'll, I'll ask you about the uh, long-awaited waterfront restaurant down mm -hmm. at the base of the bridge uh, on the old uh, yes, McDonald's, the uh, so-called McDonald's property. Tell us about that. Very exciting. It, as you know, Marty Bloom, who owns the uh, Mission on the Bay in Swampscott, Mission Oak Grill in Newburyport, a couple of other restaurants in the south end in town, and, and used to be the owner of the Vinnie Testa chain of restaurants. He's, well, he's got a long history of, of successful uh, building and managing of, of high-quality restaurants. Marty uh, got his proposal permitted, uh, locally, the planning board approved the, um, uh, the required special permit uh, before the holidays. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when. It might have been late November, early December. You know, everything's a blur when you look back <laughs> before the holidays to now. But at any rate, um, very excited. Marty and team have submitted their applications to the state for their um, uh, Chapter 91 license and their MEPA permit. 
uh, and those processes are now going because they take some time. And the goal is to get him uh, through that permitting process uh, and in the ground with construction by late summer, early fall. Uh, we are going to be um, taking the old McDonald's building down and having the site, the site ready for them to come in. Uh, that was part of the city's commitment during the RFP process. So we'll be, uh, we're scheduling to do that work this spring. Um, and the hope is still, the, the target is still that he'll open that restaurant a year from this summer. A year from this summer, okay. And so we, we should expect to see the wrecking ball come down on the old McDonald's uh, sometime, you say, this spring? Like yes. A few months from yeah. now. Maybe a little, here, little more nuanced than a big old wrecking ball, but well, yes, the yeah. building's coming down. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. Yeah, so because we're sitting here, it's February, what, 12th today? Or yes, 11th? it is. Is it something like that? Yeah. Isn't so Lincoln's uh, birthday? Uh, well, yeah, I guess President's Day is next Monday. Yeah, so... Uh, now, um, I wanna, I'm going to hold up something here and ask you to talk about, ask our, our, our uh, camera person to zoom in on that. And we've seen a little bit of activity. If, you've, if you drive on 128 between Brimble Avenue and Essex, as I do every day, um, mm -hmm. there, on that landfill, there's some things going on. And uh, a Solar Farm, uh, Blue Wave, is uh, putting <coughs> up a, uh, a solar farm array, 12,000, I guess, panels. Like, tell us a little bit about that. Well, What's free happening? advertising for Paul Layton and the Salem News there. That's nice <laughs> picture. So um, we're excited about this. This actually has taken a long time to get yeah, permitted. I imagine. Um, however, it, it's a great project. Uh, that's the old city landfill between Brimble Ave and, and Centerville on the highway northbound. Um, Blue Wave Solar is going to be building. In fact, they've started their work. Uh, they'll be building a five megawatt solar array um, that'll feed clean energy into the power grid, you know, once it's operational. And the goal th is that it'll be um, permitted operational by early fall, late summer, oh, really? early fall. That's their goal. Septem wow. September is That's the target. That's pretty ambitious. Um, we as a city uh, signed a power purchase agreement with Blue Wave <clears throat> to purchase about half of the electricity that'll be uh, created there. The city already has a power purchasing agreement with the company that owns the, the solar array over by the airport, mm -hmm. by the soccer fields. Um, and this will be a second one. And together, those two uh, PPAs will make up around about 65 70% of the city's, the city government, mm -hmm. uh, municipal uh, electric operations. Yeah. So for, for, you know, for our electricity and our, uh, our buildings and, and all that. Um, so that's exciting. We're, we now are getting... Um, offsets now for our electric bills, which will be saving us money. Yeah. And we're helping to create clean, renewable energy by doing so. Yeah. Now, there's another step to that. The rest of the electricity created, the, the developer Blue Wave is offering community to solar. The, to the community. And community solar is something that's made possible by the state um, incentives around clean energy. Um, and so... There are a number of companies that offer community solar. On this project, they're offering it locally, which is great. If you are not able to put solar panels on your rooftop because it's not south-facing, doesn't get enough sun, or if you don't really want to go to that extent, you can, as a, a private property owner, resident or business, <clears throat> you can enter your own mini PPA with a company. Right. And you essentially save on your electric bill and you help underwrite the cost of building and operating the the, the clean right. renewable energy, which is a great win all around. Yeah. So I, I understand that the way I read in the article that people can say probably seven to eight percent on their bill. They will pay a, a Blue Wave uh, mm -hmm. a, a check, a money for credits that they would get. So they'll get ten dollars more. If, if they pay ninety, they'll get a hundred dollars yeah. worth of credits so against their bill. Put simply, say you get a bill for one hundred twenty dollars from National Grid. But you do this community solar with, with Blue Wave or whomever is, who is hosting solar anywhere in, in the state, really. <clears throat> if they push out $100 worth of that, you know, it's a kilowatt hour thing. If they push that much out based on your percentage of the overall project, then you'll get a bill from that company for the $100. But it actually might be for $90 or $91 or ni instead of $100. Yeah. And then you'll get a separate bill from grid for the remaining 20. So the, well, you can, so the yeah. goal is you, you'll, you'll save money each month, and again, you'll yep. 
be helping make the, the project possible. And as I understand, the city is already uh, is, is signing up to take about uh, a third of the power that's uh, that's generated, about 35 about, percent? About a half. About a half. From, okay. from that project. Yeah. And they, and they are signing a lease with the city, like a 20-year lease, and so the city will get lease payments for that? Yes. The, the city's going to get payments from Blue Wave on the order of about a quarter of a million dollars a year for the next 20 years. Yeah. Uh, through a couple of different mechanisms for, you know, for us hosting them on our on our property. Right, there. right. So it's a win, win, win all the way mm -hmm. around. The city gets some money, some taxes, and mm -hmm. the and and some energy, and they they of course as a business thrive, and then the community also is able to save on their energy costs. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, now let me uh, let me hold up another article here if I can get our uh, <coughs> our camera person to. Zoom in on this, and um, we'll give the Salem News uh, another. But <laughs> so I'll do it quickly. I, I yeah. want to talk about the police station and a couple other things. Well, we'll do that. So just tell us quickly why this is from yeah. November. <clears throat> I mean, December eighteenth, mm -hmm. uh, so dredging of the Bass River, and yep. uh, so um, there was a problem with uh, testing of the of the. Right. Of so the, the the Bass River hasn't been dredged in about seventy years, and it really needs it. So for a number of years, our Harbor Management Authority has been working on trying to get this teed up. Um, we got approval from the Army Corps of Engineers about a year and a half ago. Um, they approved the project. They approved us taking the material that we would dredge and dumping it at their ocean dump site. Right. And re relying on that, we went to the state, applied for grant money. The state awarded grant money, went to the council to approve the match to the state grant money. And then we put an RFP out, awarded it to a dredge company, who came to Beverly and mobilized to start dredging our river, only to find at the, the very last, <laughs> like the, not the, the 11th hour, really the 12th hour, <laughs> the Army Corps of Engineers said, oh, wait a minute, we, the Army Corps, and our friends at the Environmental Protection Agency, who awarded you this permit, messed up. We can't let you dump that out at the ocean site because it's not clean enough. Yeah. We're really sorry that we messed up, but we have to tell you no, and by the way, we have no money to help you out with. So they, they, they've been, it's been frustrating. I will say that our, our, our congressional representative, uh, Senate, uh, Congressman Moulton, is working hard to try to get us some help through the, the federal budget. Uh, but still, we had a contractual uh, you know, agreement with uh, the dredge company. We're working on that. Um, we also are retesting the sediments in the river to try to get a better handle on just what needs to happen next. Yeah. So okay. that's where we sit with it. Well, it's frustrating, but we're yeah. working at it. Well, thank you for that, Mayor. Well, now, um, the police station. There's mm -hmm. been a lot of, lot of stuff going on down there at, at the front of the Cummings Center, a lot of activity. So tell us what's happened so far and maybe with the timetable into the future with the building sure. of the new so frowns, police station. So frowns <laughs> for the dredge and smiles for the police station. We're really <laughs> excited. Uh, you know, we've been working at this for a number of years, uh, and it's... It's been designed, it's been permitted, and if you drive by, you see it's a full-blown construction site. Yep. And they're working hard, and so they've been... We need to raise the level of the site by six feet because we, we look ahead decades and right. say, okay, with storm surge see. that could happen with rising sea level, we need to protect the asset before we build it. Right. So we're raising up the level. Uh, it's being built, a uh, slab foundation, uh, no basement, and then it'll be oh. a three-story building. Um, so we've got climate change and rising sea level in mind as we, as we designed it. Uh, in addition, we are building a geothermal system, which involves 30 some odd tunnels down under the ground. It'll be a system, well, heating. it'll be a system that, that, uh, runs water through pipes into the ground. Now you get down far enough underground and it's pretty much a year round constant 55 degree yeah. temperature. And so what you do is in the summer, you cool that right. water in the ground. In the winter, you warm it up by running it through the yeah, ground. Yeah. Um, it's a great system, and that'll handle our, our heating and cooling. And then, um, so that's in process, and you know, the hope is by later this spring, you'll start to see steel coming up. It's all about the groundwork first, kind of getting the site ready. We also, right up front, you've seen some trench digging. Uh, there are some utilities that run through the site that need to be relocated around the site. Uh, that service the coming center. So we've been working at that piece too. Yeah. And I, I might say, I, I have heat pumps in, in my home mm -hmm. and I, I benefit sure. from, we have the Mitsubishi's, the ductless heat pumps, and it does exactly that. During the, during the summer, I cool my home because of the differential mm -hmm. and during the winter, I heat it. So it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful- it's a great technology. Great technology. Um, let me ask you, um, 
the city has been working on a, on a... Can we stay with the police station for one minute? I, I just want to yeah. say that our target is to move the police in a year from this summer. So okay. Summer so 20, 2021. 2021. Yeah. And so that, that's everything has been kind of geared towards, you know, trying to get the work done over the next, at this point, yeah. another 15 months or so. Yeah. Now, remind, remind our viewers, where the, the police... <clears throat> Police personnel are dispersed kind of in, in various places in the city. Yeah. So that's going to kind of put everybody together. Where, where, where are they now? So uh, you could probably fairly say that they outgrew that police station decades ago. Yeah. Right. Um, so our criminal investigations division is is up at the airport. Um, the uh, community impact officers, the. Um, 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 the mental health counselor person that we have, the domestic uh, violence counselor, um, the animal control officer, they're all off-site in different buildings yeah. where we either own or pay rent. Yeah. So, so to, to get them under one roof, we'll, and when we move in there, we'll be moving the combined emergency dispatch. Right now there's um, the 911 calls go to the police station. If fire is involved, they then you know, transfer over to fire. Um, both of those operations will end up in the new police station. And at that point, it, so it'll be a combined system and it'll be civilian run as opposed to currently the, the fire operations are, are civilian dispatchers, but the police oper operations are uniformed officers. Yeah. And the goal is, is to make that all civilian and get those uniformed officers back into, back, in, you know, out in the street, out and, in the street yeah. and, and policing. So that, yeah. that's all, you know, that's all exciting. And it's, and it's in the offing. Now. So uh, uh, summer of uh, next summer, 2021, uh, we want to, okay. Um, so, the master plan. I know that there have been meetings with uh, with uh, with uh, constituents, uh, with with uh, with our, our community. A lot of interest. Tell tell us where the master plan. I think it's been what eighteen twenty years since our last master plan. Something like two thousand two. Yeah, yeah, it's been about yeah probably seventeen years. Yeah. Um, so we started this process a little over a year ago, and the goal was and continues to be to try to finalize its recommendations and its language and put that in front of the planning board later this spring. The state does not require us to have a master plan, but as soon as we start to write one, they start telling us what to do, which is <laughs> interesting and fun. Uh, so, so it needs to be formally um, uh, adopted, approved and adopted by the planning board. And in addition, we'll, we'll bring it to the city council to ask for their endorsement of it as a, you know, as a, a, a planning document as well. And it's exciting. It, you know, it covers a range of issues, including affordable housing and open space and um, uh, community services and um, just kind of overall, how, how does our community plan for and arrive at what it should look like in 10 years time and 20 years time? Yeah. Um, you know, the current master plan put a high priority on recognizing that we had and we continue to have a real need for more housing, uh, really at all, for all types of people, kind of profiles of people and all income levels. And that need continues. So that's a really important part of the overall set of recommendations is where and how to provide that. Uh, how do we ensure the community is, is walkable and sustainable and, and, you know, really is continues to be a place where everybody wants to be. One interesting point in Beverly is we've always been a community where the people who are already here, if they want to stay, can, yeah. you know, through this, the, the seasons of your life, can find a different type of living arrangement. Or if you grow up here, you can choose to come back after school or whatever and, 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 and find a home here. And for people who discover Beverly and say, Yeah, I want to be Beverly here. Beverly is all that. And, yeah. we, and we want to be a part of this. Like my parents discovered Beverly a few years before I was born and said, This is the place we want to live and raise our family. Um, we've always been able to be that. And that's a challenge that we try to address in the master plan because the housing need is so, you know, it is a challenge. It's, it's you know, we're making progress. Um, and how do we ensure that the qualities we love about our hometown remain and, and, and are you know, preserved while we meet needs that, that continue yeah. to come up? And when, when do you expect that you'll have the, the final plan um, you know, done? And, and We're working hard with the consultants on all the public input that came with the draft recommendations that were put out around the holidays. We're, we're trying to get one kind of close to final draft set of recommendations back out in front of people for more reaction and, and, um, and you know, an input. And then after that, it should be finalized and go, as I said, mid-spring. 
I mean, it's already mid-February. Well, yeah. Days well, run away fast. Yeah. Mid-spring is the hope. Yeah, okay. And, and, and speaking of plans, uh, I, I <clears throat> want to talk to you about something else that I understand that the city is beginning to work on a <clears throat> climate action plan as well, which is a little bit different <clears throat> than, than the master plan. Kind of tell us what the difference is and what, what, what do you see as the climate action plan? What is the purpose of that? Yeah, so we made a commitment to write a climate action plan. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and it's something the states put a high priority on as well. Simply put, Right. As a city government, so the city of Beverly owns buildings, owns vehicles, uh, manages um, certain services that that all contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. Right. So pretty much until recently, all of our electricity and our building heating and cooling and our uh, fueling our transportation, um, you know, our vehicle fleets and managing our trash and recycling and our water, uh, drinkable water and our sewage treatment plant. All our operations have been powered by fossil fuels, and the fossil fuels give off greenhouse gases, which has been contributing to, to climate change. So we are trying to better understand and identify just what that means and how we make progress and do our part as one small city, as other cities and states and, and national governments all around the world are trying to do the same. So the plan is really two-part. The first part is um, a scientific kind of... Um, quantifying of our emissions. We as a city government, how much do we emit each year? The city as at large, every resident, every business, you know, every building in the whole city, how do you, how do you kind of gauge and quantify and inventory those emissions? And then the next step with that is to project out what Beverly is going to look like based on expected uh, increased population growth, housing, economic investment, what do we project out for additional inputs in 10 years' time, in 20 years' time? And how can you set a peak and say, no matter what, we need as a community, individually and together, to drive our greenhouse gas emissions down? Yeah. And, and how do we get to really start that process? So that's all the first part. And then the second part is, what are all the different things we can and should be doing to start moving the needle? You know, this, this solar field, it's going to create clean and renewable energy that's sure. going to go into the grid and replace fossil fuel created energy. Right. Um, we're taking delivery on our first electric vehicle school bus. A full size school bus is coming here in August. It's going to be an EV, meaning it won't burn any any diesel. It's, it's going to be battery charged electric. Yep. So, you know, that may feel like a baby step because we have 47 vehicles in the school bus fleet between buses, half buses and vans. But it's a step. And, and we're just trying to. Get, get moving on this, this stuff. So we're doing some of it already. The plan will help us to bring into better focus what our need is and what the most effective near-term and longer-term action items would be or yeah. will be. Well, with, with, uh, when you say climate also, would that also include, I know uh, we've been participating around the city in these seaside sustainability <clears throat> workshops and, mm -hmm. of course, uh, climate change and, and increase in sea level and, and the effects on the shoreline and everything. Is that part of the, uh, the climate action <clears throat> plan? As you yes, say? It, it absolutely is. So I'm talking about mitigation, which is the word used for figuring out your emissions and starting to decrease them with replacing fossil fuel with clean and renewable energy. So that's the, they call it mitigation. The resiliency piece is what are we doing about the fact that the storm surges at high tide are getting worse, you know, and we've had flooding in, in, in along the Bass River and we had some seawall damage with the Nor'easter a couple of years ago at Lynch Park. That's about Yes, it's taking actions to adapt to the changes we already see and the changes that are coming so that we continue to thrive as a coastal community. Yeah, so yeah that's the other piece of it. Yeah. Now, um, every year you, you give your state of the city mm. address uh, and any, any advanced peek uh, for our audience about what you might be uh, sharing with the no, I haven't written it yet. <laughs> I, uh, I, I mean, I know that I, the, the topics I'll be talking about are similar to what we talked about today. Um, and more, but more, I really just wanted to say that it's, we'll be having it. I'll be giving it before the city council at their uh, March 9th meeting. So if anybody's interested in watching it live, their, their meetings start at 7 p.m. Typically, they, they have a couple of housekeeping items at the beginning of the meeting, and then it'll go to me presenting that, uh, that address. And where might they watch it live? 
Um, <laughs> Salem Cam, I'm kidding. Bev Cam. <laughs> Bev Cam, of course they can. Oh, can I say one other thing about the Climate Action Plan? Sure. Really excited. We announced we were doing a Climate Action Plan. The next day, Mayor Driscoll from Salem called me and said, you know, we want to do one too. Let's do it together. <laughs> so we called the state up and said, hey, what do you think? And they love the idea. Because if you think about it, a lot of Beverly residents go to school in Salem, work in Salem. A lot of Salem residents work in Beverly. You know, th yeah. there's a lot. Of, and we share a, a train line and we could be we could have much more, you know, um, robust other types of transportation, bus lines, vans, shuttle vans and whatnot. We've talked with Salem and Peabody about trying to share resources better because a lot of people need to go to doctor's appointments or this or that in other communities. So. We're now going to make the Climate Action Plan a joint effort of the two cities, oh, which we're really excited about. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and you know, uh, uh, having been participating in a couple of those, um, I, I, I believe I know that all the states that have uh, uh, ocean shorelines in the entire United States are taking action. We, we in New England here have our shores tend to come sort of, relatively speaking, straight up out of the water. But if you live in states that have a lot of low-lying uh, um, uh, area around their, 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 their oceans, like Florida, Louisiana, mm -hmm. uh, the Carolinas, uh, you talk about a one one meter rise in sea level, and and you're you're talking about taking out huge huge swaths of uh, of land. Well, well, I'll tell you something about about us in Beverly, right? Now Revere Beach was built on a barrier beach. That's a barrier, an old barrier. It's, Revere Beach is kind of like Cranes Beach, but it was all built up, and behind it is are the salt marshes. Well, our train runs through those salt marshes. Yeah, we know that that the the MBTA, the state, they're they're going to have to harden that train line against sea level rise. Essentially, they're probably going to have to raise it up significantly. Yeah. And, and so there's a massive investment that's going to be needed to make sure that our ability to continue to, to you know, live the life we're living and access you know, throughout the region for all purposes continues. So that's a good example right yeah. there. Yeah. So uh, um, our, I've been told we only have a couple minutes left, uh, mm -hmm. Your Honor. So maybe any, any final remarks you want to make uh, any, any before, uh, before we close? So, oh my gosh. Well, um, I don't want to put the whammy on us. I was going to say it's, it's mid-February. And, <laughs> and, and, uh, we found a mild winter. <laughs> we're, we're, we're hoping that the winter continues to be a, 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 a forgiving one to us. Um, lots of great things going on in Beverly, as, as always. Uh, I was able to get over to the, to the high school the other night and see the girls' basketball team. Uh, at senior night, what a team we've oh, got this year! Great, yeah, I think I think both both teams. Well, the boys' uh, teams only really got boys. one loss this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I mean, it's it's uh, there are a lot of great things that always happen in Beverly. Um, anybody watching wants to uh, wants to let me know what they're up to. You know, please do. <laughs> we've been busy. It, it's it's been an exciting start you know, to the and, year. And I and I, I think it shows, Mr. Mayor. There's so much going on in Beverly, and so many mm -hmm. so many more improvements in the city that go to improving the quality of life of our of our community that that, that and that's what it's all about really mm -hmm. uh, as as uh, tip o'neill is wont to say all all politics is local and you yeah. want to if you, if you keep that in mind i think you can't go wrong <laughs> oh absolutely and, and let me say this for for our viewers if anybody has a thought on who they want to see on on the next city scene or what they want us to talk about because i i you know i really should bring in some of our department heads as we talk about different topics and so i think that's a great idea if uh, they can if, let you know they can let me know absolutely so th there you go you heard it from the mayor well i like to remind our viewers that you've been watching city scene with mayor mike cahill i'm your host walt kosmowski and we'll see you next time